So I'm starting out with a joke. Um, ask me about this, this fake title at the end, um, if you don't get it. Um, so another, talk, uh, another title for this talk um, is replacing CSS with JavaScript. Um, has anybody heard about um, Christopher Shadow's um, CSS and JavaScript um, slide deck? Um, any hands? Does it ring any bells? OK, so this is all brand new. Um, so he has a lot of these ideas that, that inspired my talk. Um, so, so he has seven points in his talk. Um, and I'm going to kind of zoom in on three um, about problems with CSS at scale. Um, and I guess here they are. So CSS classes are global. Um, you can um, run into this situation where they unintentionally override one another. Um, so once in a while, if you're trying to share some constant between CSS and JavaScript, that can be painful. Um, and uh, isolating component styles um, and user interface components can be a pain. Um, so there are preprocessors, right, that we all use, um, like SAS, Less, and Stylus. Um, and they bring a lot to the table. Um, they help a bit. Um, and they do these things, right? We get mix-ins, extends, imports, and they're even like programming language features, like variables, loops, and functions that they do. Um, but they don't solve everything. These problems are still there, even if you use a preprocessor, right? And these are, um, like at Facebook, they have these huge projects, and so they're doing the CSS uh, and JavaScript thing um, to help solve them. Um, so one attempt at a solution is this thing I just built. It's really just an experiment. I've, it's kind of like nights and weekends over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's up in atmosphere. That's the package. Um, and this is what it lets you do. So um, I don't know if you guys can read this. but um, So this is CSS um, kind of stuff, right, but expressed in JavaScript objects. Um, and so the first thing there is that there's an external variable. Because it's just JavaScript, you can share that and plumb that into your application. Um, so one of the things the library does is these built-ins. Um, so, so, in, so in Stylus, you can, you can call color, or you can say color.lighten, um, and it'll put up a color for you. Um, that's my answer for extend. Um, so you can take a couple of objects and merge them and have it produce a new list of properties um, to put into the DOM. Um, and if you, don't, if you have a property that is not supported in the scheme, so you notice that it, you can put in these camel case names, and it'll translate them to the thing with the hyphen um, in CSS. So if you have one of those, you can just put single quotes around and just pass the string in, and that'll get passed in. Um, and the last thing you can do is um, there's this thing in Stylus called nib. Um, and so we can do that same kind of thing here, but in JavaScript. Um, OK. Oh. So, um, so anyway, these, these preprocessors have loops. Um, JavaScript has loops. Um, we should use JavaScript. Um, this is a little bit of code showing um, you, you can actually go and make this, this string um, that'll go into an inline style string um, in a helper. Um, so that's what it's doing here. And you can even merge these things um, in a helper. Um, and of course, you can do that, you can do that um, before, so it's not dynamically rerunning. Um, and so this is how you get it in. Um, you, you basically have that helper make that style string, um, and that's just stuck right into the div, and it makes for really clean templates. Um, and of course, you can mix and match. You can, you can um, use classes um, and stuff. You don't have to rewrite everything this way. Um, and so we use CSS uh, uh, for resets. Um, I'm, I'm doing this project right now where I'm only doing the resets um, in CSS and everything else this way. Um, OK, a demo. Um, hopefully, I can get this to work. Oh, wow, that really, OK. OK, so here's my, um, my little demo um, that's got a switch on the screen. You can flip it. Um, I have a shell script that's, that's just replacing the uh, thing. So this is a uh, bunch of these little um, um, UI components. I guess I can call them that. Um, and it's, it's just it's running that loop to, to generate the different colors. And I've got a special little case um, in here that, that basically just makes that a different color, and it makes the border um, different, and a bunch of things. Um, let's see. So I've got a more complicated thing with more switches. Right? And they're, they're hooked up to the same reactive R, so they're, they're kind of talking over each other. Um, so that's kind of fun. And uh, here they are on a set interval. Um, and this is kind of crazy. So it's, it's showing uh, 
the animation that this does. So it's pretty fast. Um, it works. Um, um, so that's the demo. Let's see if I can get back to the slides. Maybe I should quit that. Oh, I'm at time? OK. OK, there I am. Um, <laughs> uh, so anybody have any questions? Probably a lot. Um, there are a bunch of downsides. Um, there's some future things that we could do, and that's how you can find it. Uh, what are the downsides? Oh, gosh, OK. <laughs> so um, well, there's no media queries. Um, it's a new tool. Designers will hate it, right? That's kind of the jokey title. Um, <laughs> There's no, there, you, this thing where I've got this, this global um, CSS object that I'm putting out there, um, if, you, if you mistype a, pro, um, a property name like gold, and it doesn't know what gold is, it'll just pass an undefined in, and you won't get anything. There's no error checking. So yeah, six proxies will help a lot um, with just dealing with that particular thing. Um, the thing they do at Facebook um, doesn't, um, they basically just pass in strings. So, so the, all the values, in there, instead of CSS.EM and a number or something, they, they just, um, you put in a number. Um, so they basically mostly just pass strings in. Um, and here I tried to go one step further and make it so that there's not a bunch of quotes all littering your code. Um, but yeah, so th there's, there's probably a ton, ton more things I haven't thought of, but um, there. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, so none of the transpilers do it. Um, so it's, it's something that the VM has to do for you. Um, so if you're running an IE, like the technical preview, um, that will do it. And um, yeah, so, but yeah, it would be great if that were here today. It would be really, everybody wants it, right? Um, awesome, okay. All right, thank you so much. Hey, thanks.